everyone, I'm Faith. Let's talk about the Bellicon and some basics of bouncing. So I have my Bellicon here. There's a few different parts to the Bellicon. You've got your frame, you've got your bungees, and you've got your mat. You get to choose your Bellicon bungee color and your mat color, of course, and also your frame. Um, however, you want to make sure that your bungee strength is customized to you. So there's different strengths. You want to make sure that you choose one that's appropriate for you. A few things about the Bellicon. Make sure that you step on the Bellicon one foot at a time. Nice and simple. If you're new to the Bellicon, you can use some stability bars. You can use one on either side, or if you'd prefer, you can also put it a little bit closer to a wall or in a corner so you feel like you have a little more stability. As far as the size goes, if you have the room for it, a little bit more space gives you a little bit more freedom to bounce. But if you don't, the smaller sizes are great as well. I have one of those at home, and I really enjoy it. A um, few things before we get rolling, we're going to do a little body scan to just kind of go through your own body and do a few little safety checks on your own. So when you go to stand on your Bellicon, a little wider stance with the feet gives you a little bit more support. So you don't want to go way out here, but a little bit more towards shoulder distance will give you a little bit more balance. If you take a little bend of the knees, you want to make sure that your knees are always tracking over your toes when you're bouncing or when you're standing on the Bellicon and that they're not rolling inward or too far outward. If you find that you pronate a little bit, you can put some sneakers on. Otherwise, bouncing barefoot is the way to go. That way the muscles in your feet can really work and strengthen in the right way, and also you won't slip. Sticky socks are okay as well if you have those at home. Once you're on your Bellicon and you're standing with your shoulder distance stance, you want to make sure you're lengthened nice and tall. Your gaze, if you can st stay right at eye level, is exactly the way to go. If you look down, you'll feel like you'll go a little bit towards the floor. If you look too high up, you'll feel like you go a little bit back. So just thinking of the horizon, I always think like the horizon's right in front of me and I try to look outward and that really helps. We want to try to relax the shoulders really let them go easy. I know for me, I hold a lot of shoulder tension during the day if I don't do my rebounding, so I try to really let those guys go as much as possible. The one thing you do want to try to keep pulled in nice and tight is your abdominal muscles, your core. So you can think of your belly button pulling in towards your spine as you're bouncing, and that will really help you stay in the center, which is what we want to try to do, stay right in the middle and not wander too much in either direction. If you think, okay, I do want to step off and take a little bit of a break, make sure that you don't bounce off, but that you step off one leg at a time. That's your nice, safe bet and way to go. All that being said, once you're ready to start your bounce, you could take a nice, comfortable little shift. And this is a good way to get used to rebounding, used to your Bellicon, make sure that you're feeling it out. And you want to make sure that you breathe. Always, whenever you're working out, should be able to breathe. Inhale through the nose, exhale through the mouth. This workout should be really fun. You should feel rejuvenated and relaxed when you're finished. Maybe like you can even do a little bit more. So you're not over exhausting yourself. If you find that that happens, take it down a notch, take a break. At all times, you should be ready to just have fun, have a blast and rock and roll. I'll see you next time. Happy bouncing.